I just want to ask this question. When you're communicating, right? So let's say you're communicating with everyday people, right? In the spirit world, spirits. And this is a weird question, but I'm gonna give it to you because you're a weird lady. So can you when you communicate with star beings or or guides from the from the, the luminous worlds, yep. do you find within yourself you prefer to work with those everyday humans that have passed over or the star beings that come in. Oh my goodness. I think it, well, for me personally, as Janelle, the star beings and the guides and everybody, I love being a medium. I love working with, you know, everyday people like all of us. Uh, but when you uh, start to move with into that realm, into that layer, it's a it's a different layer of consciousness yes. and so we start to really um, we get downloads we we get all sorts of information but senses and feelings and even in reading sometimes and for very um particular types of people that sounds really awful doesn't it but but they have stepped forward with uh with uh, for their human and they have stepped forward the star beings and when that first started happening it was like right that's great i've got an alien now and uh you know they come in very strongly with their personalities and whatever but i love working in an altered state uh channeling whatever you want to call it and uh and allowing that that process and i don't know kelly if this applies to you as well i know what janelle does and myself it did in my development i had many times in the circle where these beings of light would come in they try to form themselves as humanoids but you know they're not and many students of mine say you know i have these and they're afraid to say it i have these alien beings is that okay yes that's okay yes, that's right yeah, 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 no, so. I, this absolutely happens with me, and I yeah. love it because I yeah. learn just as much. I'll get information, and I'll absolutely. say to the, to, I'll be in a session, and I'll say, wait a minute, I'm getting some information that I didn't have a clue about, and I'm yeah. so excited when this happens, and there's something magical that when you're working with star seeds, uh, the guides, it takes you out above so much, and it's exciting, and you learn so much, and something about humanity there's something about humanity with it that i just love yeah. it's I, you know i did a i, I told this once before but it's a, it's a great story it's one of the uh, my connection with shirley mclean which i i mean i started as very yes. young wondering about shirley mclean and reading a book out in the limb which got me started on my path and i went to brian hurst the medium that recognized it within me that i was a medium and i remember there was a magazine called the interview magazine from new york it was called interview when andy walworth started it and i remember that she was on the cover of it this is way back in the nine, early 90s and Brian said to me, he said, my guides are telling you to keep on doing your work as a medium. You're going to meet her one day. And of course I did meet her one day and became good friends. And I did a reading for her when she turned 80. I went to her place in Malibu did a reading. And I'm, it was it was like an, another other reading I ever did before in my life. All that came through are legions of beings, legions and leagues of beings. And of course, those are the words they used that the human could understand it. Yes. But they were all different types of legions that she was a part of. And I said, do you understand this? She goes, oh yeah. And the symbols they gave, certain symbols, certain um, uh, replicas of symbols. And she said that she used to go in the desert with her husband in the 50s or 60s, and they used to see craft all the time. Yeah. Wow. wow. <laughs> I mean, yeah. she was really a pioneer, James, with that. Yeah, yeah she was. We, a lot of us yeah. wouldn't be here without her, I'll tell you. Right. So. Wow. But That's amazing. so amazing. I, I, I think it's fabulous. I mean, Australia, when I was in Australia, Janelle, I started seeing a lot of uh, what we want to call them light ships or ship vehicles, oh, vessels okay. all over the place. Down there. Sorry, lovely. You just you just froze. What was the question? Sorry. <laughs> oh, I, I just said when I was down in Australia several times, I would see the starships everywhere. I call them starships yeah. because they're all over down. They're all over down. Yeah. There. Yeah, they are. I'm. I every night. I have a fascination and have since I was a little girl of going outside and looking up. You know, like, and I didn't even know what that was, but it was just this calling. Well, that's to, a big trait, Janelle, for star seeds. Yeah. It's a huge trait. If anybody, that's one of the things that we'll talk about. If you have this yeah. thing, astrology, like I love looking at those planets. I love yeah. it. I yeah. want to see what's going on. And I, it, to yeah. me, astrology is a roadmap. And I think, and it's a star bean roadmap. It's amazing, yeah. yeah. But we do have a lot of craft down yeah. here and phenomena, and uh, and it's becoming more and more accepted now. 
And, you know, once upon a time, we as mediums and psychics, we were like, you know, the freaks of the universe. Well, now we're kind of ordinary. (laughs) (laughs) Not us, of course. We'll never be ordinary, Janelle. Don't say that. We'll never be ordinary. (laughs) <laughs> but it's normal, whatever normal, <laughs> whatever whatever that is, yeah. normal is. Right. But um, but you know, so now it's shifting, and I think there's right. an awakening and an awareness within on the planet that uh, there's shit out there that's definitely happening. Oh, right, so, absolutely. And I think as our consciousness shifts, our consciousness opens up and expands more. We open up to those higher levels of being. Exactly, and yeah. we see more. So the more our consciousness expands, the more we we see those different vibrational frequencies. And it's the same with mediumship, really, isn't it? It is. It, it really is. It really is. Um, here's a question. This is from Stacey Hansen. She says, I'm wondering the same thing. How do you know if you are a star seed? Yes, well, think, go to the workshop. <laughs> come to the workshop because we're going to be talking. If you even ask the question, you probably are one. That's right. Or, exactly. and, if, and if you don't feel that you are, but you have a child that might be a little different and perhaps, you know, uh, has some interesting friends. And uh, there's all kinds of ways to tell if you're a star seed. So take the class um, if you can, everybody. It's going to be fabulous. Right. Yeah. I think, too, you'll find that you'll start to settle within all these crazy thoughts you might be having. You'll start to settle and and understand it and accept it. Yes, yes. And most um, starseeds are empaths. So we'll just start with that. So I have a question for Janelle. <laughs> Thank you, love. So, so um, out of your guides that you have, that you're aware of the guides that you have, and I know they shift and change, how many of them are, are beings from those levels? Uh, more than two, more than I can only say that because um, at different times in life, one will amplify a little more than another, and I find, and we find that with our guides anyway. One, it, you know, they amplify and come forward um, at certain times. But I've certainly been aware um, of Pladean. I used to call her my Pladean princess, <laughs> and uh, and she's still around. And oh, if I start talking about that, you know, the tingle start going yeah. and, and all of the thing but um and i know that there's also a uh i think i'm pretty sure and i can only say i think a zeta as well you know from the zeta reticuli so area because there he's shown it he i say he for that one mm-hmm. has shown himself to me uh um subjectively clairvoyantly and and he was very demure um the, the big eyes and uh, the whole you know they, I think they call greys. I'm not sure, but uh, but just a very tiny, demure kind of almost um, fragile looking being as he as he appeared and amplified and um, and and I felt quite warm and surprised. But he was like a a coppery brown kind of color. It was very very strange. So you know, we have these moments. I think, and, and apart from the surprise in the in that second, um, it's we can go back into that space and and start thinking about the experience and and gleaning more from them. So I know there's those two. For sure. Okay, I, and I have a question for you both. I feel like I'm interviewing both of you, which is fine. With me. <laughs> yeah. But because this is just something I'm thinking about. So today I did a meditation, as Kelly knows, and it was on you know for the eclipse, and I got my information from Ram Das, a lovely man. And in, in part of the song I played today, he says in the song that we are you know part of nature. We are the trees. We are the waterway. We are uh, the flowers. We are everything. That's energy. We're part of all that. We are that. We are. Yeah. We are all that. We're all one. There's no separation. As a human yeah. being, we feel like what's separate, that's the biggest illusion we have is separativeness. But really when you, I'm just going to ask this both of you, your thoughts on, so if we are everything, then we are part of those star beings, we're part of those galaxies, we, we are them, yes? Absolutely, absolutely, James, absolutely. Yeah. It makes total sense because we, and in fact, star seeds are the ones, the originally, that planted the seeds on Earth. I've heard that. You know. Which is really interesting. So can you, can you, in your work as mediums, right, can you tune into that level of wisdom if you need to, not that you're conscious of it, but that you download that when you have a client and maybe there's some high level information they need or something. You can bring that in, can't you, as a medium? Janelle? Absolutely. Yeah. 
going most forward. definitely yeah. and really it's no different to uh, communicating with a guide or allowing the thought of the guide and we have to get out of the way you know like we would go oh my god it's an alien and blah 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 we would, you know, think <laughs> I know all that. a million years <laughs> I know it's, so, it's lovely yeah. and gorgeous but but we have to move that part of us and just accept and go with it you know I've had a a reading a while ago with someone very very interesting um working with uh, small nuclear plants and all sorts of things so on a big big time in the um, anyway blah blah and i became aware of um another guide or another being that stepped forward just you just over there and um and i said to the fellow you know you know you have star being guides here you know you have an et with us and and he says oh yes i understand all of that and the guide or oh, the the being said um we're watching with great interest um, and because of what they were doing and it's a, like it's a big thing big deal right. and, um, and uh, so it was very interesting and uh, I don't think they like nuclear stuff just just I, I would agree with that I, agree I don't with that, 100%. think they like it so um so what I understood at that moment was um, you know, that, oh, yes, well, they're looking after you or they're blah, 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 you know, trying to help. Um, but now I believe we're watching. <laughs> you know, don't mess up, please, because it affects us. So right. it's really interesting. So, you know, Janelle, I had a client um, not that long ago whose husband had passed. And as soon as he came through, I, my vibration starts to change and, and, you know, elevate on a lot of different levels. And I said, oh, you're not from here. And he told me, no, he wasn't from here. He was a star seed. And he said, but while he was here, he was a nuclear scientist. Oh, wow. And he was very concerned with what was going on and about getting his work published and what needed his wife to make sure that she had gotten his work taken care of to a, a graduate student because he said she wouldn't understand it, but it's got to get to a graduate student who understands it. Wow. It, was, it was a fascinating experience I, for me. It is incredible. Yeah, it I, is incredible. I just heard in my head, and I'm, please forgive me, you guys, but I just heard that Einstein is trying to come through but needs a great mind in order to facilitate that. Wow, I could imagine. <laughs> wow. Might be me. <laughs> wow, yeah, I was going to say, probably be my Sorry. grandson. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Albert. <laughs> Isn't but that it's true. That is yeah. fascinating. Yeah, wow. it's very cool. Because now, let's talk, talk about, about that. that. Let's talk about that, James, because how spirit would work is they would, Einstein would need somebody that the could. The capacity of The capacity mind. of that. They need to be expanded to such yeah. a point that they're able to receive that information on a higher, what about a higher vibration, a higher level, that they're fully able to get it fully through the con yes. conceptual part of it, fully through. Again, into that human too, to go down, 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 um, and to be understood. So I, I've talked about this before, and I'm going to talk about it again, if you don't mind. In Sedona, when I was there, and I talked to Pleiades, the beings of Pleiades, and I'll never forget, it was the feeling I got, that sensation, that we're really trying to dumb it down. They got to bring it all the way down to like a 747 in the head of a needle. And it was like, that was the hard part, was bringing it down to that level so we humans yeah. could get it. It's just yeah. really amazing. The expansiveness of that is just beyond human comprehension. So then probably what will happen, James, is that a star seed soul who is highly advanced will become a medium as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, like I was, I did, I'm a medium and a therapist, so I can cover that. But I couldn't cover the scientific part. Do you know what no, I mean? Yeah, but you know, I don't know if it's me, if it went through earlier, or to take the, the stars and the sun, whatever. But when you said that, I thought you meant when you pass into the spirit world that you'd be a medium and that there are mediums over there to bring through information to mediums down here. That so could maybe, happen as well. Maybe it goes, which I do believe it does, because we talk about our guides have guides who have guides. It's right. like a stairway. They go down the next level, down the next level, down the next right. level. Right. Well, it's all influence, isn't it? You know, yeah. and expand part of the expansion. And like we were saying earlier, we're we are one. You know, we're all connected. We are all connected. Mm -hmm. And and, and I think the reason that star seeds are so important right now, and it is because of Earth. Earth is going to be going through all kinds of shifts with these planets right now. We're going to see earthquakes. We had a 4.8 earthquake on the East Coast. That's unheard of. Unheard of. Just a couple of days ago. It's unheard of. But I think that Earth is going to be making a lot of changes. And 
I feel that the starseed beings, you're right, you guys, that it would they would be concerned about the activity on, on this planet. <clears throat> I think we, also they'd, they'd be very they'd be very concerned with the responsibility that humans do things, don't do things. I think the responsibility for I know they hate wars. Like but there's gotta right. be a sense of responsibility of having a war. Yes. Like why would you do that? And 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 how could no. you hurt other human beings? We're all connected as one. When you're hurting one, you're hurting us. You're hurting everyone. We're all hurting if you hurt one human being. So right. just get that awareness out to the humans on this earth is a big mm -hmm. deal, but we need to do that because by hurting one, you're hurting all of us. Exactly. Yeah. And we feel it. You know, yeah. we as empaths feel it and know, understand it. And it's very disheartening. It, it know, really is. The point where you just almost give up, you know. So well, I, I, I think it's the evolution of the planet. As Kelly often says, we come back for these reasons. We have chose to come back here. But yeah. I, I do think that the, there are certain things that we could say destiny, but I do think that human beings make those choices. And those choices that they make may not be good choices. Maybe it's from yeah. the ego. Maybe it's from that power. Maybe, it's, you know, it's it's a tough one. It's a real, it's real tough one. Yeah. It's yeah, like it a jigsaw puzzle, for God's sake, you know? It really sure is. is. It is, and it's going to be fascinating to see how it all turns out, isn't it? <laughs> but, yeah. And As if, we go. If it's a war, and if there are wars, I think there will be a war. I think we have to, within ourselves, have that sense of relationship, who we are, and that we are souls having this human experience, that love is the only way. We can't be in fear. We can't be in fear because fear is not going to do anything. It's going to hold everything back. But love has got to be the only way out. Love and that's it. what's got to expand. The awareness of, exactly. of love, the consciousness of empathy, the consciousness of compassion. That's got to expand. And that yeah. we're greater than just this, you know, we're some of the parts here. Exactly. True. Yeah. And we do count. We don't think we count. You know, or what is one voice or what is one right. sentiment? But really, you know, like you say, James, thoughts are things. That's and awesome. so and thoughts are things and they permeate the universal frequency. And so that expands too. So it's our job to think, oh, well, let's give it a go. So, we've, so we move into the center with prayerful thought and openness and heart. And, yes. and that then starts to affect everything and not the anger that we see on certain parts of the planet. It, it, it's the rippling effect, Janelle. The yeah, ripple. totally. So whenever I see a television show or news or whatever about war, I send love. Anything yeah. about negativity, I turn on the positivity. I send love to that newscast or that person or the person hurt by war. I'll just send love. I'll, I yeah. call it pink lighting. I'll send unconditional love, pink lighting to Beautiful. them. Change yeah. the frequency because it's that rippling effect. We're all connected to it. Exactly, exactly, totally. I love that. I love that. It's our responsibility as em empaths and mediums down here yeah. to help with bringing that energy to people and to open up that space for people. So, you know, and everybody has a choice. Every single individual has a choice. They want to live in fear. They want to live in love. And it can be pretty scary, but I think fear is more scary than love. No. <laughs> oh, love is scary. <laughs> But <laughs> that's another story. That's yeah. another show. <laughs> another show, Janelle. Another show. Oh, sorry. You know. <laughs> you know, I have to tell you guys, I had a very ex funny, I don't know, funny experience, but I'm sure, and Janelle, I'm curious if you've had this experience, and James, I'm curious if you've had this experience. I did a reading, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago um, for a woman who, who I did not know. She came to see me, and her husband had passed. Her husband came right through, and he starts with, apologizing. Now, in my mind, I thought, and I'm trying to move myself out of the equation, is he apologizing because he died suddenly? Because he tells me he dies suddenly, he's in a car accident, and he dies, and he's gone. And he's, she's, and I said to her, oh, he's, he's very, very sorry about that way he passed. And she said, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I said, and now he's talking about um, a box in the closet, a box with, um, it's an orange box, it's got some sort of a, not a ring, it's like a bracelet inside with um, initials. And she said, Yes, mm -hmm. that's right. And I said, and I heard him say, this is what this is about. And I go, oh, was there an indiscretion? <laughs> and she said, you bet there was. And I'm so mad at that son of a bitch. And I'm, I, I mean, I'm, I hate doing counseling between, um, you know, um, couples. I can't stand couples counseling as a therapist. I can't stand it. So now I'm doing couples counseling with this, you know, I know it's crazy. And then I said, he's telling me though, that you have a new, you're involved with somebody. And she said very proudly, I am. <laughs> <laughs> and I was laughing so hard. And then I said to her, do, do you realize, and do you understand that with his indiscretion, because he was having an affair and he dies suddenly, 
and I understand the betrayal piece of it, but there is, and this is where the, the part of, um, as a medium that you work with, with compassion and understanding, you, I said, I just want to give you another lens to view this situation. It's possible that you were in another lifetime had this experience and did this to him. Yeah. It's yeah. very possible. And she said, really? And I said, yeah, it's a possibility. Yeah. And be, I said it because I had to be clear between this energy, you know, this anger and all of this for what? Yeah. yeah. Kind of fast. More than likely it was a past life. More than likely. Yeah. Throw that yeah. to us to even out the balance of the karma. So more yeah. than likely. Oh, she was responsible too. So she's got the responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and we don't something. know that when we're in our human form, do we? We don't know that going no. through. It, <laughs> and I'm know. just the medium. You know, don't shoot oh. me. I'm just the medium here. No, no, don't funny. shoot the messenger. <laughs> don't shoot the messenger, for God's sakes. You know, oh, yeah. God. I've had it too, Kel, you know, like, uh, and, you know, we go a bit off here, but but uh, the, the husband came through from the spirit world and then they'd had, you know, all these problems, breakups and indiscretions and all sorts of things. And he was very disinterested in her when, when he was here. And he's apologising left, right and centre. Right. And she just looked at me in the, and I'm laughing. Right. Um, terribly professional and she slammed her fist down on the table and she said i don't care if he's coming through from wherever he's coming from he didn't give an f about me when he was alive and i don't give an f about him now that he's dead <laughs> And I started laughing. And he's going, I'm really sorry. I'm yeah. really sorry. I'm really... And, See and what I, said, I was dealing know, with? It's so weird, yeah. you know. And, yeah. and, and she just didn't care. And I said, look, mate, I'm really sorry. We can't, you know, just hang out, just see what happens. But, yes, we do have these funny, like it's serious but funny yes. at the same time. I mean, they get so involved the human part of themselves. I mean, it's yeah, like yeah. Terrible. It's like people say to me, like, uh, it's happened for you guys too, where the, their parents were married for 50 years. Well, um, your mother said she's not with your father anymore. What do yes. you mean they were together 50 years? Well, they don't belong together anymore. Well, what do you mean? <laughs> she's going to a different place and he's in a different place. They're finding their, you know, yeah. I don't understand this. Well, there's a big world yeah. out there, you know, worlds out yeah. there. Well, they've met up with somebody that they hated right. in life and there was a big, you know, big thing. You know, it's part of being a medium and people, yeah. you know, we learn so much. That's how we learn our craft, to be perfectly honest, is experiencing these things. Yeah. And uh, and we do meet up with our enemies, you know, or people we hated in life and or hated. Yeah. Us. Well, we let me it. ask you, have you had this experience, Janelle? And I know, James, you and I have had this experience. I'm sure you had it where a soul comes in, you're doing the, you know, you're doing your reading, a soul comes in, you know, I have so-and-so here and he says, you know, da, 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 I don't want to see him. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, yeah. Plenty, plenty of times you do that. I, I had a lady, this is a really funny story. I, when I was in Brazil, I brought a lot of people in Brazil, this lady named Magda Best. And Magda Best, about four foot five, Hungarian lady. She was metaphysics for 30 years, she taught metaphysics. What a character, a real character, lives at the top of the Topanga Canyon, Kelly. Oh, I was her, just going to say where all the ETs are, actually. Yes. Yeah. And her husband um, uh, did the, um, uh, he came up with Samsonite luggage, one of his patents was Samsonite luggage, the Whoa. shopping cart, so on and on and on. Wow. And I'll never forget that she, um, she said to me, I was, I was at a demonstration in, in Burbank, and a lady came through, and it was just her sister. She wants to say the Magda. Magda. She goes, yes, that's my sister. She's sitting in the audience. She goes, that's my sister. But I didn't like her in life. I don't want to see her now. Send her back. <laughs> <laughs> Send her back. Send her oh, back. That's right, isn't it? I know. It's hysterical. But what do you guys and do? It, that is yeah, an opportunity like for, it's probably an opportunity that the spirit woman, the sister, wants to say, I'm sorry. She wants to apologize. You know, they really work hard, as Mamelis used to say. We work for them. We don't work for the living. We work for the spirit. That's right. exactly. and, and it's an opportunity for them to say, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Yeah. Because yeah. that's why we do mediumship. We do work for them, not for the living. But it's an interesting quandrum you know, when, you, when that happens to us. Sure. And they all apologize invariably. Right. Every single person that comes through apologizes. Yeah. So get used to it, kids. We're all going to be apologizing once we've taken off. <laughs> it's into so the true. Yeah, right. they all apologize, you know, for whatever. So, Do you guys you... ever have this one where they'll say, well, I'm waiting for the special secret word that we're going to have. Oh, my God. Okay, let's talk about that. <laughs> yes. Okay. You've told them everything else on right. the planet not yeah. the bloody word but the that secret they word oh is i actually said the secret word once swear to god. god it just came out that whatever the secret word yeah. was 
And I was just going on and on with whatever. And she stopped me and said, that's the secret word. I said, what? Because I said so much, you know, it was like that one bluebell. I don't know, whatever it was. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I did a show, TV show once, and I got a secret word from a kid, and the kid's, uh, the father's son, and the father went crazy, and I'm like, he had so much great information, evidential information, but he said one word, and he believed it. I was like, but what about all the other things about your father's? Yeah, name? exactly. They miss it, but I but know. perhaps there's something in it that that they will think about, you know, later on, and it's true of any reading, you know. Well, um, that- don't you get that where people will send yeah. you an email later and say, yeah. "Wow, you know, I thought about this two weeks went by, and yeah. you know, this, 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 and this." You were yeah. right on this, this, yeah. this, and this. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I, I talked about this before, Kelly and Janelle. You've heard this story, but it's such a great story. When I was in uh, Canada once, my first tour there, it was city. It was must have been a thousand people in this ballroom. And the first reading up was a man who came through and he said, um, my son is here and I, I'm uh, the first um, uh, person in Canada to have a liver transplant and my son has my chest board. And oh, I looked, and no, that's pretty specific. It's very specific. Audience, no one raised their hands. That, that, no. That whole, no one raised their hands. And I'm like, I know what I'm hearing. I know what I'm getting. Right. No one raised their hand. And for you to have to leave a spirit in that place, as you guys know, it's a horrible oh, thing. Oh, oh, horrible. 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 So I moved on, which I never do. I didn't want to. At in front of a thousand people, James. In front of a thousand people, right? In front of a thousand people. So you got to really know yourself. So at the end uh, of the demonstration, two hours later, I went and I did a book signing. And the first person up was this guy who said, well, that was pretty amazing. My father I said, your father? He had the first reading with the liver transplant. That was my father and I was chessboard. And I said, well, why didn't you say something? He said, well, you knew it was him and I knew it was him. So that's a little Oh, matter. my God. And okay. I kicked him out of the ballroom. I said, goodbye. Okay. I don't know if you guys remember you this, punch them. but wait a minute. I don't know if you remember this, but when we were in Alaska, the three of us did a link. We did a few of them. Yes. And I started the first link. And I said, I have a woman here who has a baby at 16. And I was pretty specific about 16. Very specific. And 16, she has a baby and there's a lot of, um, uh, uh, what is the word for it? She felt, you know, really awful about the fact that she had a baby at 16. A lot of, not guilt, but just, um, she just felt, I don't know, just awful about it. Shame, that's the word. There's a lot of shame around it. And I kind of went through all of this and, and then one woman raised her hand and said, well, my mother had me at 17. And I'm, intuitively, I knew that wasn't the woman, but nobody was. And I kept saying, are you sure it's that? And nobody other than this other woman. Well, after the reading, James, and I don't know if you remember this, you guys, you might remember, remember. this. A woman came up to me and said, it was me. Yes. I, it was me, but my mother, I was, you know, there's so much shame around it. I couldn't even raise my hand. <laughs> now, this is a different generation. She couldn't even raise her hand. <laughs> What are you going to do? There's no, and she was that, crying. She was and crying and sobbing and, and all of this. Yes, that's she right. was. And, you know, I kind of went, well, you know, and walked. <laughs> and yeah, I mean, right. <laughs> Time for a drink. We need but, to but then you oh, the reading then. Oh, can you continue on? No. Yeah. I mean, it was <laughs> like unbelievable yes, yeah yeah when you're a medium many of these things happen everybody and it's, it's, exactly. it's part of mediumship welcome to mediumship you're dealing with yeah. humans it's yeah. really not, it's not an easy job it's not an easy job but how fun is it to do triple links oh, oh it's it. great fun we had a lot of fun yeah. and we call it fun but it's <laughs> uh, and it is and uh but it's really amazing how that yeah. works too isn't it it's you know so we fun. we walk into the infinite and uh and it's quite easy just to step into that that frame and, what a beautiful uh, saying i love yeah. that janelle i'm gonna remember yeah. that yes we'll have to find the recording yeah. and i'll see what it yeah. <laughs> but it is it's true and we do walk into that and uh and you know your students are amazed you know i remember starting to teach double links or whatever to students and and they would go can you do that yeah. and i'd go yes you know it's it's just you're just working in the same vibration you're in the same field so just start listening Listening and sensing, you know, and yes. and and cl- um, working with one another, you know. So uh, and the funny thing is, Janelle, which which is really uh, people should know that in a double link and a triple link, um, that the spirit people will use the different aspects of the medium. So exactly. there are different life experiences and so forth that one medium has that the other one doesn't, and the exactly. spirit will use all those different aspects, and that's why it makes it so so full yeah. and such a yeah. solid message. You get all those yeah, aspects exactly. together. Yeah, because we all three have different messages. Yeah, exactly. And it's still, it's still the same person and different mm-hmm. aspect of that one human. And so think about, you know, as students, um, we are not cardboard cutouts. We have so many layers and so many life experiences and personalities, uh, depending on what's going on. So 
the spirit people are the same. They've had exactly the same experiences. Why would they just be, you know, oh, you know, five foot eight and blue eyes and right. whatever? How boring. Oh, my so, gosh. You know, I tell my students that when they're doing work, the picture like you're painting a portrait of someone. And the colors of the paints that you use have all different degrees of that color of paint. So the shadowing and the texture mm -hmm. of that paint color are their mm -hmm. personality traits as you're portrait, you know, painting to that portrait. And you have to bring that in. And yeah. uh, very, very true. Speaking mm -hmm. of mediumship, by the way, I just remembered everybody. Um, my mediumship one class is 50% off right now for the next day on my school. Mediumship wow, James. one Mediumship one certification. I just remembered. It's the mediumship certification <laughs> number one. Oh, Renee has it on there. Okay, fifty percent off. That's 50 incredible. Off. Yeah, because wow. so many people want to do it, and um, I just want to throw this at them in the beginning of the you know the spring and a new life. And as you know, mediumship to me, I'm sure to you guys, it fulfills your life in so many ways. It's just oh, so yeah. fulfilling. Um, nothing like it's it. Deeply nothing fulfilling. Like There's nothing like it. There's nothing and, like it. No. And you change. If you, you change. don't change, if you don't change, you're not doing it right. So yeah, true. your soul changes. You learn who yeah. you are. You you have to change. Yeah, that's yeah. a great one, Janelle. If you don't change, yeah. you don't, and you have to, know, it, it teaches you who you are very quickly. Sure does. <laughs> sure does. And you know, a lot of people are. You know, we've all had ex life experiences, and we're going through trauma, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, but we can still work on our mediumship and our soul aspect, and uh, while we're healing. And, uh, you know, we get it helps us heal along the way. We have greater understanding. So if you're drawn and I'm not talking psychotic or really bad sort of stuff that that we can go through. And Kelly knows all about that. Yeah. But uh, but along the way, we can be going through trauma or loss and grief and still experiencing an awakening and an opening. And I think that partly is part of the plan, too. So. You know, nurture yourself, that's for sure, but accept these extraordinary, miraculous things that are going on to, as well. Well, and on Earth, when we incarnate, we're going to have experiences. Like, you know, we'll have some traumas, we'll have some betrayals, we'll have some you know, illnesses, we'll have some things to grow. Part of and being human. It's part, part of being, of being, being human. human. It's really the human experience, and it really does open us up. It cracks us open, James. Yeah, for many, <laughs> for many events, we're, we're all cracked. It's okay. We're, we're, we're all cracked. <laughs> Coming up with book titles. And, <laughs> <laughs> but it's all about our growth, and what if we learn from these experiences? Yeah, it's very true. Very true. What do you What do you expect, Janelle, you know, in your mediumship coming up in the future? How do you want to see your mediumship in the future? What do you expect? Oh. What do you wish I, to get uh, see in the mediumship or how is it going to uh, evolve or what do you think? Yeah, it's certainly expanding in yeah. ways that I never thought. Well, you don't. Well, the thing is, you don't know what you don't know, do you? And uh, once you start on the journey, it's a case of all oh, this stuff's happening and let me try and figure it out. But as you move through the, the years of it and it's not a six month course and you're on, it's, uh, you know, it's a years. Life. Years, yeah, it's a life, it sure is. But other things start to open up and your awareness of, of what, what the world is, and I'm not talking about the physical world, I'm talking about, you know, the etheric and, the, and the, whatever the, this matrix is that we are. And, uh, and I just feel that, uh, for me, that expansion will continue into the wonderment of uh, all that there is. Now, I know that, you know, it's probably not going to happen in one lifetime, and I don't know that that answers the question easily, but, but there's well, no then limit. Well, let me throw this at you then, since you just said that. that. It opens up that wonderment, and then maybe does that set up you in the next lifetime that you come back oh, and continue? Oh, yes. You continue where you were. You continue yes. Moving. I was speaking to a friend uh, only a few days ago and uh, and I was saying I'm setting things up now that I'm going to be uh, hopefully looking forward to in a future life. And it's not so much that, oh, yes, I want this and, you know, the physical stuff we want. It's my spirit. I'm setting up my soul, my purpose, my journey and the way I want to be. And so I'm setting that up for a future destination. And who's to say that that future <laughs> destination isn't calling out to me to That's say, right. I'm not thinking about it That's now because in 300 true. years we're going to be working together, you know. No, so. that's very true. And your future destination may not be Earth. 
That's right. Oh, oh it won't be. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you right now. <laughs> no can and do. I think we have come from that other place anyway. You know, often when uh, I, I work in, um, with people in an altered state or whatever channeling, you know, they'll remind us, they'll, they want to remind the audience or the people that you are not from here. Remember that. You are not from here. And uh, and it's to get everyone out of that earthly, physical, kind of materialistic state of mind. Yeah. Here's a question, and this is from Yogi Kotecha. Dear speakers, as your mediumships were developing, as your skills were developing, did you need to sit with a message for a couple of minutes before communicating the right message? Not so much, not so much, because we are a conduit. Uh, you know, when you're first learning, sometimes you want to edit the information. You know, you want to run it through your brain and say, can I accept that? Is that okay to say? And of course you learn, learn to loosen that hold, but... But now we're a conduit and uh, and I just allow the thoughts and feelings and sentiments to come forward as they are. But do no harm. What do you do, Sally? I initially, I when I first began, I would edit the messages yeah. because I was always concerned with the yep. feelings of the other person and how they were going to respond and all this. And now it's slowed down enough. And I don't know how to say this exactly, but it's slowed down enough and fast enough at the same time. Yep. Does that make yep. sense? It slows and fast at the same time yeah. here. And that um, helps me to just let the message out. For me, it's um, I find now it's the fullness of the message. I have mm. to bring through the exact emotional component of the fullness. It's my job now as a medium I get that message to really try to bring as much fullness of that emotional charge that the spirit is bringing into that message and the fullness of that message to be presented. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Because there's always an emotion behind the message. Yeah. And yeah. I got, I have to be able to bring that as much as I can, that emotional charge with that message. That's what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful. And it expands as you become more confident. Yeah. And, uh, you know, your confidence does play a big role. But it's also, um, Janelle, something interesting in that, in that, what you said, which is start, you pause. I think pausing is everyone's felt very good to do in that you as a medium are learning as you're going as well. Yeah. So it'll be yeah. often say, wow, I love it. So I was like, wow, that's so great. That's so cool to hear that. Wow, that's, I never thought of it that way. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. That's you what it's all really. Open. Yeah, I think so. We, we we learn. We're part of the the learning. It's an art of discovery. We always got to be willing to discover new things with every single message that comes through. Yeah, totally. Here's a. I, maybe we should take. Well, I've got to take this question. How does one move themselves out of heavy grief and loss to be able to receive a message? Mm -hmm. Wow, that's, that's, that's a hard else? question. Well, we've all experienced that, and uh, sometimes when you're caught up in the physicality of it and definitely grief and trauma is a big deal um, and we have to experience that in the human component exactly. but as you start to you sometimes you can actually observe it as well I found with myself that I would step out of the situation and go oh man this you know this is too overwhelming so I would just breathe and then step out of it and just observe and I would just say things like wow this is what grief feels like or this is what trauma feels like and then that starts to allow the heart to open little by little and uh, and show you the way forward and so once you can start to get the mind out of the way the the physical out of the way you find that your guides and everybody's there the, the person you've lost they're all there waiting anyway they're all trying to get information through so you have to then just look I don't know, for signs and whatever it is. So I, I think you're 100% right. Exactly what you said. I was going to say, but say definitely exactly the same thing. That humanness, we have to, it's part of the human experience, grief. Yeah. And we got to realize that it shouldn't hold us back, that it is an experience for us to go through, not stay at, but go through it. And yeah. of course, you validate your love for that person. But as you said, the most important thing is that there is no end. You'll see them again. And that's yeah. the most important thing. Your love continues on. There is no end to love. Love continues yeah. on. Yeah. Grief is love anyway. Love is grief. Grief is love. So true. True. lost. Yeah. So, but you can do it. It does work. It does. And it's hard. It's a hard one. It's a real tough oh, yeah. Even losing yeah. a child. I think one of the hardest lessons on the earth is losing a child. Yeah. I think I so really too. Do. Yeah. yeah. I agree. 
Yeah. That's a big one. And here's a question from Patricia Stanko. She says, do our loved ones miss us? I think they do. I like to think that because I have loved ones that I miss. But yeah. I think they 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 miss the physical as well. You know, I can't touch you physically. You know, they miss that. And uh, but they they can reach us in other ways. So I my short answer is yes. But they're not grieving. They're not going through the trauma that we might be going through. Um, but and they don't like us uh, experiencing experiencing that no, they don't. but yeah they don't and they don't. Uh, the sooner we can move through they it, it's easier they, it they see them up too yeah yeah t exactly it lightens them so so that is my story yeah, they, they, they do miss us i mean i, I agree totally they miss us um it's yeah. so funny because they're outside of time time means nothing to them um and then i was one i don't know i, was, I have a connection with someone who did the reading for in the early 90s and um, I don't know, I thought about them one day and they came back really quickly and said, oh, James, that was so long, long ago. That was such an old yeah. memory ago. But, yeah. you know, they're still a part of us, you know. Yeah. I mean, one of yeah. the greatest things that happen when we pass to the other side, we see them again and relive old memories. Memories yes. are real. Memories can only be created down here, not in the spirit world. So we bring those memories with us when we go over. Right. Yeah. And Debbie Wallace says, do they feel and hear our prayers? Always. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, 10 times, 20 times, 30 times stronger. They hear it really well. It's really amplification. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And they often, sorry, James, in a as, reading, as a, they'll often yeah. say that. You know, they'll say, I've heard your thoughts at night or whatever, you know. And and uh, it's uh, definitely, they hear everything. They, they hear feel. everything. Yeah. yeah. They, they don't miss a thing. Um, oh, Anna, Anna Franquez says, can our loved ones in spirit see us all the time or only when we call on them? No. They, they see us they, all the time. Yeah. They're around. They're around. <laughs> get used to it. You know, I get used to it. They're around all They're the time. Around. Yeah. They're around. You're always being looked at from one way or another, folks. Yeah. So let's look at something great. You're never alone. Like, They're always seeing you know, things. I, it's actually not possible right. to be alone. I, I When no. I was seen through the veil, nobody is alone. It's actually yeah. not possible. Yeah, it's true. No. Very true. So, yeah, it's funny. Yeah. Sometimes don't I wish we were alone, but we're not alone. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I think in those personal private moments, you kind of have to switch that off and just say, you know, the door is closed now, fellas. Right. I think Bye. they respect us sitting on the toilet. I think they do respect that. <laughs> they part do. Because <laughs> they're not interested in those things. They're just not. Yeah. No, 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 no it's not. not about that. No, It's yeah. funny. A lot of my friends are passed over and, and uh, loved ones. I, I try to get them in and they say, oh, I said, well, where have you been? I'm really busy over here. I don't have time. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm really this. busy. All right. I'm really busy. I'm, what do you yeah. think? I'm going to school. I'm doing right. yeah. work. I'm, helping this I'm going person. to a concert. I'm going to, a concert. I'm going to the museums. Go to yeah. school. Yeah, they're busy over there. It's a busy, busy, yeah. busy world. <laughs> we have to take a ticket, don't we? <laughs> we do. Oh my gosh, you guys, yeah, this is very true. This is great. Um, all right, take care, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Thanks James. James. Bye, Bye everybody. everybody. Bye, everyone. You've been listening to Both Sides Now and Beyond, featuring spiritual medium and master teacher James Van Brog and spiritual medium and psychotherapist Kelly White. That was great. Maybe we changed some lives. And maybe opened up some minds. Which way do I turn? Uh, right. Uh, I, I mean, left. Yeah!